guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I am driving over to my dad's place uh, once again, where the M5 is located. And uh, we're gonna try to put together as much of the front end as possible, other than the headlights, um, and because we don't have the, the headlights and the hood, because we don't have the hood. Uh, we're still looking out for those, but I mean, honestly, guys, parts are pretty cheap to come by on these cars, surprisingly. Even if we need a new transmission, it's only about $400, which is crazy. The only thing that's super expensive on this car is the engine, the V10 engine. That thing is like 10 grand. That's not including labor and gaskets and all that stuff you gotta do to it. So when you're buying the car, you're basically buying the engine. Everything else is just pretty cheap, not gonna lie. So you guys saw in the last video, we threw in a battery. You guys saw that we gave it a few cranks and uh, ultimately it didn't turn over. I mean, it just kept on cranking, didn't turn over. So you're gonna have my boy Nick use Inpa, the BMW um, software, like Insta or Inpa. He's gonna use the BMW software to diagnose the car and see if he can come up with like a, a direct issue so we can actually fix that direct issue. I'm gonna, I don't know if the computer can actually say what's exactly wrong with it, but nothing's better than actual BMW scanners for this kind of stuff. So now that we're home, let's get to it. I'm having terrible connection right now to my computer because the car is like out on the like the street, not even you know in Wi-Fi range, unfortunately. So we're gonna try our best to get this thing connected and again hope for the best here. Oh buddy, oh buddy. Nor eventually this thing will start. So it's, everything is graving the navy. But I mean it's just that fear that if this engine's blown, it is the scariest thing in the world. Nick right now is clearing all the modules. We're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Absolutely have no idea if this is gonna work, but I mean you never know. Today also the iDrive control didn't work yesterday. The iDrive control did start working today. So I don't know if all the computers are kicking on, all the modules are starting to actually kick in, but I mean this thing didn't work and I was like, hmm. I mean, I, I knew it was a battery issue because the same thing happened to the 7 Series, but you never knew, guys. You never know. These cars are super finicky. All right, guys, worth a shot. First crank over after resetting the codes. I honestly have no idea what to expect. Please, God. Nope. Turns right back off. DSC malfunction, reduce vehicle stability. Let's go ahead and try one more time, guys. Nope, nothing. Now we gotta check engine light. Okay, so now I'm scanning the codes again. So after Nick actually running the codes, after we gave it a few more cranks, I got a check engine, we got a few other lights on the dash, and the code that came up was, again, the crankshaft sensor. It's saying there's no connection to it, so it can either be the wiring, uh, maybe some wire got cut or something. We did see a bunch of zip ties down there, so maybe some undercarriage damage happened. No idea, but possibly a, a thing right there. But also on the crankshaft sensor itself, uh, Nick, can you show that picture earlier that uh, showed exactly where the location was? So this one is in the front of the transmission, which actually connects into the engine. This is the one that we saw JB Weld on it. We're gonna go ahead and go underneath the car one more time and just check the wiring, make sure the sensor's all good. Um, and then honestly, end of the day, we might have to order a new sensor. And if the, the, the hole is stripped for the sensor, honestly, I don't want to JB weld it. It might even just get a whole new trans. I mean, as crazy as it sounds, because also the oil cooler brackets are broken off the transmission, and the transmission is only like 400, 500 bucks for this car. It's not the end of the. I know 4, 500 is a lot, but for a car like this, if this is the issue, I'd rather have it perfect. So that is the code. That is our problem. Hopefully, uh, it, hopefully it's just a wiring issue, and that would honestly fix most of our issues. But if not, uh, we'll go ahead and try to figure out some other way to fix this. But honestly, I mean, it, it, it's it's running back to the crankshaft, not some kind of vanos, not a camshaft, because if it's a Vanos, these engines are known for Vanos issues. These engines are known for camshaft issues. So thankfully it's not throwing the code immediately for one of those. It's throwing it for that sensor that already looks kind of played with and screwed. So literally, um, for me, I'm feeling a lot better. I'm feeling a lot better. Carly did tell me it was a crankshaft sensor, but it wasn't able to tell me which one. There was two. We replaced the other one, uh, but it, it was the one that looked all weird and stuff. All right, guys. So you guys saw in the last video, we headed over to pick and pull in a few other places. Sorry for the wind, by the way, guys. But yeah, we went to a few places and we got pretty much a lot of parts for the M5. This actually came off of an N5. Also, all this brackets for the headlights, even this V brace, this front piece for the bumper as well. We got all this stuff for $130 from AutoGator, which was super awesome. Even came with new hood latches. I didn't know if mines were good, but I mean, these came with new ones anyway, so we'll go ahead and use these ones. I really want to get the OEM radiator support because it has the OEM stickers. I mean, there's a lot of ones on eBay, the aftermarket ones that are pretty much the exact same and they're brand new, but they don't have these stickers. And I find these very important, especially for a clean title. You want it to be as OEM as possible. And then I also went down a pickup point. I found this. This is for the bumper. It literally just covers all the screw holes up like this. So it looks super, super, super good. Again, all the details. I got this for like $4 at pick and pull, thankfully. The one from AutoGator did come with this, but actually we have that on ours and actually ours is in better shape. So we're gonna go ahead and use ours. Let's try to assemble as much things as possible. So the last thing we're gonna have to do is literally just put on headlights, a bumper, and a hood. And then we'll pretty much be done cosmetically, which is absolutely insane. 
Obviously, we still need to fix this up. Actually, this guy right here, I actually bent it out with my hand. It's very easy to pull out. And as you guys can see, now it's perfectly straight again, which is pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and clean up all these lines, these marks, and then start putting on the parts. So uh, again, so we can keep this as OEM as possible. Pretty much got mostly everything assembled. We have the horn, we have the sensors, we put on the headlight brackets on both sides, we put on even this center brace. Everything is looking pretty perfect. Even this air duct is 100% like in place, not moving anywhere. Uh, we do need the one that goes on this side. I forgot about that piece, so we do need that. And uh, that's gonna help perfect this airflow right here. Luckily, we do not have the headlights, so I'm not assembling anything on this side just yet. I'm gonna try to fully assemble that side, but this side will hold off just because we're also missing this guy. We have everything connected on this side, the crash bar and everything. Everything's looking really, really, really good. Everything's lining up really nice. I did go, go ahead and connect that hose there. This hose, we're gonna go ahead and have to connect it once we actually get the washer system here. And this side, I do have the washer system, so we're gonna go ahead and mount that over here as well. But we're doing a good job, guys, so let's go ahead and just keep knocking this thing out. Taking my hand, leading the way, staying the night Looking at you, making your moves, there is no silence <laughs> just like that guys we have this piece on we have this piece on uh these two bolts actually lined up as you guys can see this thing was more caved in like that and literally with just some manpower we were able to pull this thing out which is absolutely perfect uh this side's looking perfect as well so at this point guys everything in the front end radiator support is good we just need to put in the headlight there put in the headlight there uh this is also missing a wind uh, a washer system over here we do need one of those and then an intake right here uh we'll go ahead and try to find those at a pick and pull or something again try to make this a budget build but at the same time using all oem parts so the next thing i want to do is go ahead and just tighten up these two bolts and then i'm gonna go ahead and try to put in this headlight and just see how it lines up i know the two tabs on the top are broken but just with the two bottom ones is this headlight usable or we're just gonna have to junk it because we do want to make this as OEM as possible we might have to try to get a whole new headlight but at least we can use it for now <laughs> just like that guys look at this headlight going in place the gasket on the headlight is missing there and uh and if this tab actually worked we'll be able to bolt it right there and this is supposed to be a tab right here so i'm going to be getting two new headlights if any of you guys have a local pick and pull that has two headlights let me know i'll buy it off you guys if you guys can get it and i'll compensate you for getting them as well but yes these are 08 lcis not the 2004s to 2007s they need to be 08 and up and these will work perfectly and uh, at least this will work at least it'll turn on for now but yeah everything lined up perfectly i'm super 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 happy about this something i also noticed i didn't close the door completely and check this out guys so if i go in and just push the door kind of close oh my god it's got comfort clothes guys like what i'm telling you guys this car pretty much has every single option i'm just so 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 happy about it i'm super excited the only thing is is that stupid crankshaft sensor down there and unfortunately it's jb welded any let's actually go underneath the car real quick and see if we can get that sensor out that is the goal Mind. maybe you want to stay the night Time goes fast, I don't care I've known you long enough Baby, you make me lose my mind Baby, you wanna stay tonight Time goes fast all right guys so i finally got the second crankshaft sensor out it's actually very easy to come off i literally just gave it one little uh flathead tug 
and it just popped out. So uh, that's the first issue there. Second issue, this sensor, I don't think is OEM. It says it's from Heller or something. So I don't know, maybe this is because it's a cheap sensor. It didn't work. The second issue is when I actually looked at the hole, I was like, why do they use JB Weld? They literally broke a screw in there. They probably tightened the screw up. The previous owner tightened the screw up with like an impact gun or something. This is obviously should always be done by hand, not with the gun. So I, I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming once he snapped the bolt, he was like, oh man, never mind. Let me just go ahead and throw that on there and just put some JB Weld and call it a day. Also guys, I, I contacted to the previous owner I was like what is this I'm really wondering like why why did this happen why did you guys do this he actually said he took it down to a shop and that's what they did not he did so I'm not gonna be blaming the previous owner we blaming the shop and this is why you just don't take a car to shops this car other than the front end accident is literally in pristine shape from the exterior from the interior I could tell that the owner really cared about this car and wouldn't actually do something this cheap to the car so I do believe it when he says he took it to a shop, he got the flywheel replaced and I'm assuming when they dropped it down, uh, they, must, they must have broken the original sensor or something and then they replaced this because a whole bunch of brackets are just broken. I think the transmission literally just fell on the ground or something. I don't know what happened, but every single bracket on, that holds anything onto the, the transmission is broken. Don't know why. That's why I'm legitimately thinking about just getting a new transmission, but I don't really have the space and I'm literally working on the car right there, like in the front of the street because I can't even get it to turn over. If I can get it in the garage, it'd be so much easier. I'm we're just working outdoors it's super hot out but you gotta do what you gotta do you know i would reach out to showman i'd be like hey you trying to help me out with another car transmission but i think that's super messed up he's already been helping me more than enough with the 7 series replacing the transmission multiple times i don't want him to do this one even though i know this is the issue with this car but it is what it is i gotta i gotta go ahead and do this myself so the next goal is guys is to actually remove that stripped bolt now it's probably gonna be a pain but it makes it a lot easier if we can just remove all these belly pans so let's go ahead and remove the two belly pans is a metal one and a plastic one it's gonna take some time but let's Go and get that thing out. Now that we have both actual crank sensors out, we also did get off this belly pan with all the bolts. It's literally drenched in oil, even this little pan right there. And then this is obviously the engine pan, which is only held on by two bolts. I don't know how I feel about that. And yeah, that's drenched in fluids and not just like old fluids and new fluids too, like recently. So um, I'm actually gonna probably do an oil change before we give it a few more cranks anyways. So when we actually replace the sensor, probably gonna end up doing an oil change as well, just to be safe and just to make sure that engine has enough fluids because this thing looks like it's been dripping pretty quickly. At this point guys, I'm gonna go in and get in there and just see if I can get a good angle. This screw is such a pain. Overall guys, it's a pretty good day. So unfortunately, I was not able to get that strip bolt out. If anything, I probably made it a little bit worse. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure somebody with the right tools can actually get that strip bolt out. We can put a new bolt or we can just make a whole new thread. Uh, but we will have to probably drain the coolant, I mean the, the transmission fluids just because. I'm sure some shards from drilling is going to be on the other side as well. So I don't know how that's supposed to work. But I'm going to leave it as it is. We did get this sensor out, which is a mission in itself. We did pretty much clear up the area and pretty much made it very accessible to whoever that needs to help us fix this, which is pretty ideal. We also got the front end mostly together, which I'm super, super, super happy about. So we just need another headlight, uh, a little uh, intake thing, actually both headlights preferably, a little intake thing, and then the hood. We do have the bumper. Um, I do also need some grills as well. And then pretty much the front end is put together, not perfected, but put together and at least like, you know, presentable. And as for the engine and the car itself, it is all because of that, I, I believe the crankshaft sensor, that would be, oh my goodness, like that would be amazing if that's the case. This video is ending, but I do have an insane video. Yesterday, um, me and my wife, she actually got herself a BMW and she's joining us in the modification world. So she's getting a BMW. She's gonna be hopefully joining the channel and hopefully showing her new build to the channel. If you guys are excited for that, make sure to smash the like button. Let's just say this thing is turboed and uh, let's just say it's something that I've never had and I'm sure sure you guys will absolutely love. It's something I've had, but not fully had. Like this is like a rare, rare spec. So smash the like button if you guys wanna see the next video. I am super, super, super excited. I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.